Yo, what is up everybody? Welcome back to a brand new Destiny video. Guiding Light here, and today we are actually going to be doing a review of the new Outbreak Prime. So this is a pulse rifle that you can receive from doing an alternate version of the raid from Axis Prime. You have to unlock all five monitors and then go through a bunch of quest steps to unlock it. But before we get into this review, this is what I do like to run on here. Smart Drift Control, as well as the Max Stability Output. And before we get into the review as well, I do have the Dune Marchers on. Now these allow me to move a lot faster. And if you also see me strafing back and forth a lot faster, that is due to the fact that I have those Dune Mancers on. Now, in my opinion, I do like to run these Dune Marchers just because you don't have to use that agility perk, but you still usually get that added agility because of them. And strafing back and forth really quickly with those Dune Marchers actually makes this gun a lot more effective, and it is a lot better to use, in my opinion, with those perks on as well. So with all that being said, guys, let's get on into this review of the Outbreak Prime. So the first thing I have to say about this weapon, at least when running the maximum stability perks, is that if you are someone that likes to have a very stable gun that doesn't have much recoil, but also has a lot of effective range, this is definitely going to be the gun for you. I never really have seen much trouble while getting kills from across the map with this weapon. Now if you have the max range perks on, it, it does make things a bit easier, and it's only a 3 burst kill if you are getting headshots, which is pretty amazing. Now I am someone that uses pulse rifles quite a lot, I do use the Hawksaw almost all the time, if you've been with the channel for a while, you see me using that thing almost every single time I play Trials of Osiris, it's only, it's usually just the Hawksaw or the last word for Trials, but now that this weapon is out, I can see myself using this gun a lot more, and ever since I started using it, I have been going off almost every single game in the Crucible, just because of this Outbreak Prime. Now the clip size is also quite great, with the 36 bullets in the clip, and they do, it does also have Firefly on when you get the headshots. Now there's also an exotic perk on this weapon that will basically throw out an Axion Bolt on getting a headshot and a certain amount of body shots. Now on all honesty this isn't exactly the best perk to use in PvP so there are some better pulse rifles out there for PvP if you're just talking about the exotic perks. Overall this weapon's viability and just its overall usage is very very good and it doesn't seem to get choked up on almost any range. I can pretty much get kills at any single range that I like and I don't see myself even struggling at all. The only thing that really will make you struggle is if someone's rushing up with you with a shotgun. The gun is really damn good in almost any situation, and even in mid to close range, it's still pretty good. Now, when you do get the headshot, it's really awesome as well because you get that added reload speed every time that you get a precision kill. So what I like to do with this weapon is I have a set of gauntlets on that increase my sniper's reload speed, and then every time that I get a headshot with my primary, it also increases the reload speed of that as well. So it is actually quite fun to use because all of my guns will eventually basically just have a speed reload perk on them, and it makes using uh, these weapons a lot better as well. So if you have that option, I would definitely run a shotgun reload perk on your gauntlets or a sniper reload perk on your gauntlets, just depending on what you use. And overall, you will be a lot more effective because of that, and it makes reloading a lot easier. Now the only real downside to this weapon is how big it is. When I'm using this weapon, for some reason I seem to not be able to see as well as when I'm using some of the other pulse rifles in the game. This one takes up a lot of your screen, and it does make getting around and getting used to it a little difficult at first, but once you get used to how big the gun is, and you just start watching your radar a little more, you should be alright. And the effectiveness of this gun is really damn good at any range, so you're pretty much always going to be a little bit of a step ahead of the person you're fighting against, unless they have a shotgun, which is really, really nice. Now due to the amazing stability, you do want to be making sure that you're going for headshots as much as possible. If you're going for headshots, you basically are just going to melt through anybody and you basically have no trouble whatsoever. And because of the fact that you're going to have that added reload speed every time you get a headshot, you do want to make sure that you're going for those headshots as much as possible. Now because the stability is so high, you can also hip fire quite easily with this gun. Even when you're hip firing, this thing almost has no recoil, so if you're really good at hip firing, if you just line up the circle that pops up on your HUD, every time that you're not aiming, there will be that circle there that will help you pretty much aim down your sight and you don't even really need to be aiming a lot of the time with this gun which is really awesome so if someone's rushing up on you really fast I always like to unscope really fast and just start using that hip fire because I know that the gun's not gonna miss and it does make those close range encounters a lot easier because they're not stuck aim down your sight now this gun is quite great there were a few times where I was still getting outgunned by the grasp of Malik as well as the hopscotch pilgrim so I'm not gonna say that this is definitely the best pulse rifle in the game by any means because you will easily still get outgunned by good players that know how to use their other pulse rifles just as well as you do. So if you're going up against another gun like that, you may seem to have a little bit of trouble. So there's still a little bit of caution that needs to be used while you're running this weapon. You're not just going to be like some beast tank that we just able to run in and just three burst everybody and move along. It is still a little bit hard to use the weapon, and it is a little sluggish at first until you get used to it. 
but the dune marchers do make that a little bit better and the strafing is still pretty great so if you don't have the new marchers you can always throw on that added agility perk and try that out for yourselves and see if you like that like I as much as I do strafing for me is what makes me win a lot of my gunfights because I'm constantly moving back and forth which allows me to dodge a lot of the enemy's shots so if you're running that extra agility perk that does help you with just a bit if you're strafing back and forth while shooting and I do suggest that with this pulse rifle now, from a competitive standpoint, I'm not too sure how great this gun would be. Now, I'm personally going to be running this in Trials tomorrow, just because of the fact that it's a 390 primary, so just because when light level advantages are enabled, I'm sure this gun will be a little bit better if you're going against people that are still low, lower of a level light but trying to do Trials. So, in that regard, this gun can still be quite amazing, and in Trials, I'm sure it will be for the first few weeks. Now, once a lot more people have it, and a lot of people are, uh, get more familiar with the Rise of Iron weapons, I do think that this gun will dwindle out a little bit, but I definitely will still like to use it quite a bit. I just really like the way that the gun handles, the max stability, and the fact that it has basically no recoil whatsoever is something I really do like to look for on a pulse rifle, and it is very effective at almost any range. Now the only reason that I do not have the maximum range perks on is because of that stability, but if you're able to get used to that recoil, the maximum range is really, really damn good. You can kill somebody from across the map in about three bursts, so it, the effective range that you're seeing me have right now at mid to close range, you will still have at that extended range. So if you're going up against a sniper, that is really good because they're going to get staggered and you're not ever going to get sniped because you're always going to be landing your shots once you get used to that recoil. Now, like I said before, the only downside to this weapon is the exotic perk in PvP. So I was using this weapon for about 12 hours or so, and I only got 2 or 3 kills ever with that exotic perk. So it's not as effective as I was hoping where you're just going to get a headshot and then the swarm is going to take down maybe even half of another player's health. There was even an instance where someone was tethered and I still got the headshot on them, and in total I'm pretty sure the swarms only did about 30 damage. So you're not going to be going around getting like double kills non-stop because of the exotic perk, which is a little bit of a disappointment. I was hoping for a little bit more... I was hoping that exotic perk would be a little more viable in PvP, but I could see why they tuned it back a little bit because it would be quite overpowered if you had a whole team just running this and getting precision headshots, so I can see why they tuned it back but that is really basically the only downside to this weapon. So if you have not gotten this weapon yet, it is a little bit difficult to get. It takes about a day or so, and you do need a lot of help from a few friends of a different subclass, so it's not exactly the easiest gun to get, but I do definitely think it's worth the grind. So if you have not gone out of your way to get this thing yet, I definitely suggest that you do, and hopefully you did enjoy this review. Now if you would like to see me use this weapon live in Trials of Osiris, I will be streaming tomorrow at 1 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time, right when Trials of Osiris comes out. So just be sure to subscribe and stay tuned for that tomorrow. I will be running this in Trials of Osiris. If you want to just see how that is live and my live reactions to that, I will be doing that tomorrow. So hopefully you guys did enjoy this review. If there's any more Rise of Iron weapons you would like me to review really quickly, just be sure to leave them in the comments. And I will see you guys tomorrow in another video. Peace.